Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and welcome back to my meadow. In this video, we're going to take a look at the 60 day update for the Vigo and Birdies raised garden bed. Since creating the first video, both Birdies and Vigo have reached out in the comments and have provided some updates that I will share with you toward the end of the video. And in full disclosure, I want to let you know, I am also now an affiliate for Vigo. That means that if you click on one of my links and purchase a Vigo bed, I may receive a small commission or a reward for that. That will never affect my opinion of the quality of the bed or how it works for me. You have my word on that. Let's head over and take a look at the beds and see what's growing on. We're at the 60 day mark now and structurally these beds look fantastic. There's nothing going wrong with them, nothing unexpected, and really 60 days for metal raised beds. We aren't looking for anything to go wrong. A couple of the things that I would like to point out that have been shared with me, and I'll share them with you as we take a look. For the Vigo bed, in this configuration, it came with 72 screws, the same number of screws that we have over in the Birdies bed. The difference is in this construction is that the birdies beds have a different size panel and they have installed a screw in every rib of the bed. Whereas with Vigo, they have installed a screw in every other rib of the bed. Each of them have their reasons for doing that and Vigo said they've tested it and it will be just as sturdy. Time will tell and we'll see how that all plays out for us. The actual beds themselves, the soil has really settled down and I can see that I really am going to have to add quite a bit more. Now that is not a problem of the bed. That is me filling the beds and not allowing for them to settle really well before I planted them out. As far as the plants in the bed, they are doing great. This again is the Vigo bed. Now let's step over and take a look at the birdies bed. Everything's looking great over here. This bed gets a little more sun earlier than the other bed. The one big difference for me between the two beds is edging. If you watch my original video, I showed you that this had a steel edging in it. And I liked that better and I felt like it was sturdier. The problem that I had with the birdies edging is that it shrunk and it pops up. And so I'm going to need to put a little piece of tape on this in order for it to stay down. I've heard from Kevin at Epic Gardening about the birdies and they are working on some new edging. He also told me that the reason they don't use the steel mesh inside of the edging is because it doesn't seem to hold up as well in the weather. But over time, we'll have a head-to-head -head test here of the two beds. Some questions you all asked me in the other videos are, what are these hoops and nets? And where did you get them? They are from Amazon and I'm happy to include my affiliate link below for Amazon. And I do have a video coming out about extending the one on the further bed in the back there. I have them on here to help keep some of the moths and butterflies that would like to lay their children on here. Uh, yet the pollinators can still get in here. And we even have a garden keeper right here hanging out on the top of one of these pots. And so he's able to move in and out and help me secure the perimeter here, which makes me very happy. One of the questions I've been asked is where am I? I am in zone 9A and I'm in Northeast Florida. We have a very long and very hot and very humid growing season here. So it'll be interesting to see how these beds hold up where I am. I've heard from folks who have them installed in very cold climates and they're doing well. Some of you reminded me that I needed some mulch in here and I have added a mix of aspen and pine pet litter shavings to the bed. And I have a video I've made about that that will come out later this week about how that's going. It's also late in the season for me to be transplanting lettuce, but I am giving it a shot here, hoping that the shade of the other peppers will help the lettuce grow. You also asked, how have I attached this cattle panel? Honestly, it's not attached. I just bent it over and shoved it between the two beds. The only thing holding it in is the pressure of it just being between the two beds. And I set these about four feet apart to make this possible. As I've said in the other videos, there are a couple of things I wish I had done differently. One, I wish I had bothered to level the beds before I filled them up. 
to this great landscape cloth that's here. I wish I had laid that before I filled the beds. That would have also been great. I've now added it around the edges so hopefully over time we don't have to come through with a whippersnipper as Mark from Self Sufficient Me calls it. I call it a weed eater uh, and trim it up because I'd like to preserve the paint and keep it in as great shape for as many years as I can. You also asked how thick are each of the bed's panels. So we're gonna try this a little digital caliper here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a great measurement. We're just gonna have to measure here at the top where it's painted. We get the paint on both sides. We'll do the same thing for the for the Bego. This is the birdie's bed. It looks like we're at around 1.43 millimeters. Now let's go take a look at the Vigo. And it is 1.45, 1.46. So two one hundredths of a millimeter difference. So they are practically the same thickness. Someone else wanted to know how much did it cost for me to fill the bed? Well, the materials themselves were primarily free. I used a Hugel culture method, so I used old logs, wood chips, and leaves that I reclaimed from different neighbors. The soil itself, I would say I put about one yard of soil in each one, which I pay locally delivered about $65 a yard. But where I had some expense is I paid for labor to help me. And so to have labor come out, bring a tractor, help me fill things up, that was another $250. That's an expense that not everyone would have to have. It's just what I needed to do in order to get it handled. And having help to get it done for me made a huge difference. And if you watched the filling the beds video, you'll see how quickly the tractor was able to make it all happen. Now be sure to check the description below so that you can see some of the comparative notes on the birdies versus the Vigo that have been provided to me by both of the companies. If you like this content, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel to continue seeing what we're doing around here in our suburban garden. And as always, my friends, please drink plenty of water and wear sunscreen. Have a fantastic day.